Michigan State faced Nebraska this tonight, and uh, Michigan State continuing the struggle. They lost seventy to seventy seven to Nebraska. It was a tough game. It was a, a, a tough circumstance for the Spartans and. I'm not really sure where the Spartans go from here, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Shap, what were your thoughts on this game? Yeah, just got finished uh, watching this game. Really came down to the wire. I mean, going into it, I thought this might be a little bit of a trap game for Michigan State. Coming off the uh, Wisconsin game, and then they've got Baylor, I think, in a few days. Um, So I did worry about them going into you know, sleepy Lincoln uh, on a Sunday night. And so, but I was kind of hoping that the blowout getting blown out by Wisconsin, you know, a a few days earlier would kind of force them to wake up a little bit and not just kind of sleepwalk through this and actually show up for it. Um, And they did, they battled pretty well, but with Michigan state, it, it always just seems to come down to, those end of game situations where everyone knows the ball's going to Walker and he just doesn't have any help. It seems like, right. Like they'll, you know, just at the end of this game, Nebraska was double teaming him because they know he's going to try to take those last shots. And then he's going to find an open teammate. Malik Hall was wide open for a three and hit nothing but the backboard. You know, so it's like just no one else is is going to step up for them. And credit to Nebraska because they got contributions from everyone, especially towards the end of that game. They were they were dominant. They were moving the ball well and they were making their free throws, which really just put the game away for Michigan State. So just a really, really disastrous start for their season. Yeah, and I, I mean, a lot of the critiques that I had about Michigan State, you know, last podcast saying they weren't even going to make the tournament, they're looking soft, that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, they came out and their big men did play better. Malik, Malik Hall, like you said, you know, he did miss that into the game three, but he did have 20, 22 points tonight. He was kind of the the main guy to go to, um, you know, which is hard to do with Tyson Walker on the floor as well. Um, but I mean, Sissoko, uh, he he just wasn't anything that you really needed there. Um, You know, only three rebounds. You you just need more production from your bigs if you're going to come into the Big Ten and play better here. The the guards are are obviously really good on Michigan State, but without this big's help, it's just really, really difficult for him. Frank, what were some of your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, you really kind of saw this as a must-win game for both teams. Um you know, Nebraska started really hot. They started 7-0. and They're coming off of two, you know, I'll call them respectable wins. No one really expected the the Creighton blowout. I know I predicted a Nebraska win last time I was on here, so a little bit of egg on my face for that one. But, you know, Michigan State, you know, they they came in 4-4, four and four and they do have the 46th hardest schedule in the country, according to Ken Palm right now. Um, so no real bad losses. I mean, if you want to count tonight's loss against Nebraska as, as a bad one, um, you know, that's that's up for debate. But, yeah, I mean, we, we saw Tyson Walker try to take over. And in my opinion, he doesn't need to. You know, it, it shouldn't it shouldn't come down to Tyson Walker being the guy you have to go to on every possession. You know, we saw, yeah, we did see Malik Call miss that three at the end. But there are enough pieces around him where I just don't feel like that's necessary, where we're needing to go isolation for him down the stretch. But, you know, hats off to Nebraska. K-State Tominaga, you know, he dropped 15, three for seven from three. You know what he's going to do. Uh, Juwan Gary just looked fantastic. But really, like one guy who stuck out to me was Rink Mass tonight. I mean, just playing his heart out. I think he would have 12 rebounds in the game, I want to say. Was really just commanding the floor on defense. He was navigating screens. He was, he was pre-switching. He was point switching. He was just commanding the floor and playing harder than anyone else. And he hit, I don't want to call it the dagger, but he hit the, the, the shot to put him up for with about 40 seconds to go. Um, in, in the post, it was kind of an awkward. He got the ball knocked out of his hand and kind of pivoted a little bit and, you know, went up to go go up with the shot. But he had that um, unbelievable block too on yes. the dunk attempt. I can't remember who that was, but that was an unbelievable block. I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> and uh, I feel like CJ Wilcher deserves an honorable mention too. Cause, they, you know, in the second half, um, Michigan State would get up six, seven, or I'm sorry, Nebraska would get up six, seven. Michigan State would come back, cut it to two. And it seemed like Wilcher was always the guy who made the play. Now, looking at the you know the box score, he only had ten points, but they were just every point he had was so timely. You know, you know, Michigan State would cut a two or three, and then bang, like he'd hit a three, he'd make a play. I mean, he he was he, he was electric tonight, and he did the things that aren't going to show up in the box score. But 
I mean, this is what you want in conference play, right? You want these exciting games that go down to the wire that are just absolute slugfest. And, you know, it's interesting that like neither team could really find a rhythm offensively starting out. It definitely felt like, you know, Nebraska was giving Michigan State a hard time. Every time the guy was coming off the screen, there was someone right there. Um, they just weren't really getting any good looks. And, you know, then it turned into kind of a free for all offensively. But just a, just a fantastic game. One of the more entertaining games I've seen. Uh, in conference play this season, uh, the second, probably the second after uh, Purdue and Northwestern, which didn't end well, as we all know for me, but it was still an entertaining game for sure. <laughs> we, we we want to bring that up for you again, Frank. We'll let you bring that up one time and uh, we'll move <laughs> on from there. So, uh, no, I, I, I think you're exactly right. I do. I do struggle with this Michigan State team because, like I said at the beginning, you know, last episode, I don't think they're going to make the tournament this year. I know that's kind of a hot take, and I know people are going to say, you're crazy. Tom is going to get this team rolling. I get all that. But even when Michigan State started flat before and they didn't win their games, they always came out and looked like rejuvenated against some of their bigger opponents later on. You didn't see a sleeper game like this against Nebraska. Now, I'm not trying to degrade Nebraska and make them seem like they're a bad team or a bad program they're obviously you know they're eight and two they have that blowout loss to Creighton but I mean it's been a good year for Nebraska so far but still like just by name recognition you think Michigan State would come in there and say we need some respect we need to go in here play the hard-nosed game and win it and when it came down to it at the end of the game they just they they couldn't win it and I, I just I don't see the same Tom Izzo teams that I normally have Shaps am I crazy no, not at all. And Michigan State came in beating Nebraska 11 straight times. Um, so I thought this would be kind of like a get right game for them a little bit, um, especially, like I said, coming off of that Wisconsin blowout. But I said in in our preseason Java Men pod that I was very worried for Michigan State because they fit the profile of the North Carolina team from last year where they were kind of just average, you know, and and managed to get into the tournament. Michigan State was a seven seed. North Carolina was an eight seed, I think, right? And then they went on that run. Michigan State, kind of a similar thing, where they were just in the middle of the pack of the Big Ten, and then they they closed the season well. You know, they played well in March. Everyone sees that. Then everyone sees, oh, all those guys are coming back. Well, we got to put them as a top five team then in the preseason poll. And I was not buying that at all because I, the North Carolina case, I'm like, this is the exact same team that we saw struggle for a lot of the year, just be a mid, kind of a middle of the road team. And that's really what's, uh, you know, has been the case so far this season. So I don't know. Are you, if you're a Spartan fan, are you hitting the panic button at this point, starting 0 and 2 in the Big Ten? I mean, what do you think, Frank? If you're a Spartan fan, are you hitting the panic button? Well, Shaps, I think you hit the nail on the head in that I, too, was very confused when they were so highly regarded, you know, in the offseason because, yes, they were returning everybody, but this was a sub-20 win team regular season last year. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, they have played a really tough schedule, and it doesn't get any easier. They have Baylor next, and they have um, Oakland, who's, uh, as I said last time, is good for one upset. We've already seen them do it once. Um, you know, so they're a good They gave us a fight, <laughs> They're always good for a couple upsets every year. It just seems like they're they're always in the mix. Um, so I I, uh, I don't think it's time to hit the panic button. However, you know, you, you as another one to Baylor. Now we're talking panic button time. I mean, ultimately, you know, the the old school rule of you need twenty wins. It doesn't necessarily apply anymore. But you know, you're you're, you're you, you need to go into conference play with you know a three four game cushion if your goal is a postseason. And like I said, they have played a really tough schedule. Um, but, you know, they, they've been on the losing end in a lot of their tough games. Uh, and then, you know, starting the, the season kind of, you know, again, like they did against James, Mad James Madison, it's not, not ideal either. But they're one game away, JR, in my opinion, from hitting the panic button. I agree. I, I I mean, I'm already hitting the panic button if I am a Spartan fan, but one more game, that would just have me slamming it, <laughs> just going all out and just punching my fist. Uh, I don't want to actually punch my fist on the table because it wouldn't sound great with my microphone, but, uh, but I agree, so in the Big Ten Huddle. Please do like and subscribe. We appreciate that. If this was your first time listening, we are the Big Ten Huddle. We cover all things Big Ten football and basketball. We have a long episode every Sunday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night, all at 9 o'clock. So come in, check us out, get in the chat, let us know what you're thinking. We would love to have you join us and learn more about the Big Ten.